Johnny here. Right now I'm in Beirut and in this short film I'm going to talk about tourism in Lebanon. Created as a standalone state a hundred years ago in the aftermath of the First World War, Lebanon's history dates back into the midst of time. Home to some of the oldest towns on earth, it's a place that both echoes with the past and rides on a vibrant present. From Phoenicians to Pharaohs, Greeks to Romans, and Ottomans to the Arabs, the British and the French, it's a land that has been moulded through multiple powers over many millennia, and still today carries an important role in the makeup of the Middle East. Unless you're going to travel into the country overland, the most likely place you're going to start is here in the nation's fascinating capital, Beirut. Known as a party town back in the 60s where movie stars, Cold War spies and Europe's super rich gathered to enjoy the legendary nightlife, the city was almost destroyed in the decade-long civil war which followed and one can still see the damage of those dangerous days. But now more stable, the city has been rebuilt and once again carries an air of multiculturalism where people of many cultures and creeds rub shoulders harmoniously. There's a pretty old town, some great architecture and once again a very vibrant nightlife. Travelling north up the coast you can first visit the Lady of Lebanon from where you get some great views over the city and then head on to the phenomenal Jeta Grotto, one of the largest cave complexes anywhere on earth, before arriving into Byblos. So Jericho is the oldest city on earth, Damascus is the oldest capital city on earth and Byblos is the oldest city on earth that has been continuously inhabited. With evidence of a settlement dating back to Paleolithic times, Byblos rose to prominence as a great port city during the Phoenician period. Today, it's a beautiful laid-back town with narrow streets and bourgainvillea-soaked alleyways with good shopping and some great restaurants. There are Roman ruins, including a spectacular colonnade, and the fort and church of St. John dating back to the First Crusades. From here, heading inland, you'll climb onto the Mount Lebanon Massif, which stretches pretty much the entire length of the country. Here in the Kadisha Valley, you can visit the famous Kozaya Monastery. Home to the Maronite Christians, the monastery and its cave churches were used for sanctuary during times of persecution. Lebanon is home to some of the most beautiful scenery in the whole of the Middle East, and there's no better way to experience that than getting out on one of the many hiking trails the country has to offer. With hundreds of trails available across much of the country, Lebanon offers some great walking opportunities where you can get out into the wilds and pass many of the country's magnificent and famous cedar trees. One of the best places for this is the Shouf Cedar Reserve. And it's not only walking you can do here, but many other experiences such as making tiles, a craft that has been perpetrated in the region for centuries, or learn about the art of beekeeping. And on the other side of Mount Lebanon, we come down into the fertile Baca Valley. The Baca Valley, which you can see behind me, is the most fertile region in the whole of the country and, amongst other things, is famous for its historic and burgeoning wine industry. With viniculture dating back to Roman times, the wines of Lebanon are making a comeback, with Chateau Moussa and Chateau Issa leading the way. And it's possible to visit a number of vineyards and wineries to learn about the local techniques and sample some of their delicious produce. But surely Lebanon's premier attraction has to be the extraordinary Roman archaeological site here in Baalbek. This vast site, primarily formed out of two huge temples, one to Jupiter and the other to Bacchus, little wonder given the region's history with wine, is one of the greatest sites of antiquity left in the Middle East. What's also great is that there are precious few other tourists, and if you visit soon, you'll likely as not have the place pretty much to yourselves. Travelling back to Beirut and the coast, you can visit the wonderful 19th century palace at Bet Adin, which is home to many of the region's more recent leaders. You can drop in on the ancient port city of Tyre, where again you'll be privileged to see yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site of Antiquity, again spectacularly located right by the sea. And you can visit the old Ottoman fort at Sidon. Since its creation a hundred years ago, it's fair to say that Lebanon has seen its fair share of trouble. However, now peaceful, it offers the modern traveller not just a plethora of world-class sights and interesting experiences, but also, and perhaps most importantly, a fascinating insight into understanding both the political and cultural makeup of this most important part of the world. <laughs>